auditorium. And for that reason, we have brought you the bout which was held here at the auditorium a couple of weeks ago. It's the last time these two have met. We want to show you part of that action. It's the Sheik against Bobo Brazil in the main event at the auditorium. Getting a great deal of attention from the crowd is Ali Hussan, who is a newcomer to the Sheik's entourage. The Sheik now being draped over the ropes, and Bobo has been giving him a pretty good going over. Now remember, the Sheik is unbeaten in nine bouts here at the auditorium. But Bobo has been doing a pretty good job on him so far. But the Sheik has got a million tricks that he has pulled here to keep unbeaten. So don't count him out. There's a ram into the corner ring post. Bobo again rams them into the corner turnbuckles. And there's nothing this crowd wants more than to see this Sheik beat. Here he comes, right down in front of us. That's Ali Hussan in the far corner, and Pete Sacco is... Uh, Engaged with him right now as the she comes back into the ring and takes a good shot from Bobo. Bobo but Bobo using that ahead of his to advantage. Here's the Sheik wrapped up in the ropes right now. Bobo's giving it to him with that head. Ali Hussan right behind the Sheik. Look at this. Hussan is trying to release him there, but the Sheik got out by himself. There's another Coco Bunch. A bulldog headlock. The Sheik had pulled something out from his trunks. With that right hand he threw at Bobo, he didn't get from his trunks, he just threw that one. Bobo with that cocoa butt again. And the Sheik just hollered something to Ali Hussan, who is his... Major Domo standing there, and here's Bobo hooked up in the ropes. Bobo outside the ring, his foot caught in the, between the lower rope and the second rope. The speed Sacco counting on him, he can't get back in that way. Bobo has been giving the Sheik a rough going over here, is now hooked outside the ropes. The Sheik wins it. The Sheik is apparently the winner, but what an injustice. Bobo Brazil, who was ahead all the way. Here's Bobo coming back in. He's not finished. He is not finished yet. Well, there's Bobo on top, but Pete Sacco will not count. Bobo doesn't realize the bout is over. He will count. Bobo wants to count here. He doesn't realize that the bout is over. The time, 14 minutes, two seconds. The winner, the Sheik. So the Sheik maintains his unbeaten string here as Bobo Brazil trapped with a rope 
and hanging outside the ring is unable to get back in and look at Bobo he's on his feet he is the loser the Sheik who is hardly able to regain his feet he is the winner Ali Hussan in there that guy is everywhere so Bobo trying to show the injustice of it all is holding the Sheik up the Sheik has declared the winner and look at that face he can hardly hold his feet. Watch, watch what happens here now. Bobo moving in on Ali Hussan. Well, that's it. The Sheik is the winner. Buddy Rogers and Killer Kowalski. There's a shot of Buddy Rogers. Here he comes in there in the far corner. What a match this should be. Wrestling champions from Chicago. Another one of promoter Fred Kohler's great cards. This show tonight coming from the famous Chicago Coliseum. Bob Elson here at ringside. And boy, we have seen nothing but action here tonight. There's a good shot of Kowalski. He is a claimant of the world's heavyweight title. Buddy Rogers is a claimant of the world's heavyweight title. This will be best two out of three falls. Here's Buddy Rogers right above us here. Buddy Rogers won the world's heavyweight title here in Chicago from Pat O'Connor at Comiskey Park, June the 30th, 1961. This was one of Fred Kohler's cards, and they drew 38,000 fans. And the Stanley largest gate in it. wrestling history, $125,000. The contestant from Camden, New Jersey. He weighs 243 pounds. Buddy Roger. Roger. His opponent is from Detroit, Michigan. His weight. 275 pounds. It's Killer Kowalski. Kowalski. Two out of three balls. Well, this is it. This is a big one. You know, they wrestled. Kowalski and Rogers wrestled in Canada last year, and Kowalski broke Rogers' leg. And Fred Kohler has been trying to arrange this match ever since. So here they are on Wrestling Champions in Chicago. <laughs> Getting off to a fast start. There's the bell. The bell hadn't even rung. Now they've started. going to work on Buddy Rogers. Rogers almost out of the ring. And the referee trying to get Kowalski away. Kowalski is 6'7", weighs 275 pounds. He's known as one of the roughest and cruelest wrestlers in the sport. Well, this should really be something, and this place is really in an uproar. You can hardly hear yourself think in this Coliseum right now as Kowalski and Rogers. Boy, talk about rivalry between these two fellows. It is terrific. Fred Kohler finally matched them, and here they are in the Coliseum on Wrestling Champions. Well, so far, it's been all Kowalski. 
They've been at it about two minutes. And so far, it has been all killer Kowalski. Now Rogers talking with the referee. Well, with this bedlam, you can understand why we're all having trouble hearing the bell. Kowalski braced Rogers' knee on the lower rope and then jumped on it. And looked like he was trying to break his leg again. That's the same leg, that left leg that he broke up in Canada. So Killer Kowalski really setting a terrific early pace in this match with Buddy Rogers. That's two out of three falls. Rogers, couple of right hands to the body and the head. Reverse headlock. Maybe a choke. The referee trying to get in close to see it. No holds are barred in this match. A real grudge affair between two of the great figures in wrestling. Kowalski and Rogers. Here's Rogers going down again. Oh, look at that punishment. Killer Kowalski. Well, he certainly got that left leg in mind here tonight. He's been doing nothing but working on it ever since this match started. pressure on that leg and had Rogers shoulders to the mat and there was a very fast pin now let's get into the ring announcer Dick Elliott for the time of that fall a time of the first fall four minutes and 20 seconds the winner of that fall with a leg pin killer Kowalski Kowalski The winner of that fall in the match between Rogers and Kowalski was Killer Kowalski. There's the bell. Here they go at it again. Kowalski and Rogers. One of the great natural matches of the year in the Coliseum in Chicago. Yes, you won't see a more exciting match than this in the year of 63 and probably one of the great matches of all time. Kowalski and Rogers in Chicago. There's a chokehold, and the referee getting in close, telling Rogers now to break it. There's been one fall so far. Kowalski won it, and in rather fast time. Rogers shaking his head. He said, that's not a choke. Buddy Rogers. And there's a good shot of Kowalski in trouble. All they got is now the referee again. Cautioning Rogers, got a hammer lock there on Kowalski. There's a real good shot on your screen. Rogers flying off the ropes. And boy, he was met by the killer that time. And here's Kowalski trying for the press again. He was, Rogers had a leg over the rope. There's Kowalski working on that leg of Rogers again. 
Now Rogers got his head out, half his body out under that lower rope. The referee telling the killer to break it. Kowalski is of Polish descent. He hails from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Stands six feet seven. Weighs 275 pounds. And boy, he is all man, all muscle. Now Rogers with a re punishing reverse headlock. Working around his throat and head while he's got him in that. Puts the choke on again. That was Kowalski with a type of judo chop. And another one. Rogers, a right to the body, a right to the side of the head. Drops Kowalski to his knees. Yeah, there goes. Really, there's Rogers really going down. Took that right hand to the side of the head. And again, Kowalski trying for the press. But Rogers has got his left leg, or his right leg, out over the rope. Chop, chop, chop. So Buddy Rogers has taken a lot of punishment so far in this match. It's been one fall. Kowalski has won that fall. Now Rogers staggered Kowalski coming off the ropes, and he's trying for the press, and he's got it. get into the ring announcer Dick Elliott for the time on that ball. It's now one ball apiece. The time of that ball, three minutes and 40 seconds. It goes to Putty Rogers. Well, it's a ball apiece now. There's a good shot of Buddy Rogers. One of the most colorful figures in wrestling today. So now it's a fall apiece. Kowalski, the winner of the first fall. Buddy Rogers, the winner of the second fall. And of course, the winner of the third fall will win the match. Just about everything happened to Buddy Rogers in 62. During the year, he suffered a concussion, a broken leg, and a broken nose. Buddy, by the way, is a strong enthusiast for dieting. Very, very careful about his diet. Roger stands six feet in height. He drew over a million dollars in little over two years in Chicago alone. Now the bell, and here is the third fall. Rogers and Kowalski on wrestling champion. From the Coliseum in Chicago, Bob Elson here at ringside, and Rogers flying across the ring, gets up. And started to fly off the ropes, but checked himself. And look at that Buddy Rogers strut. Buddy Rogers and Kowalski. And they take down, and they step over toehold applied by the killer. Now it's a fall apiece. This is the big one coming up. The next fall. Man who gets the next ball will be the winner. This is a big, big match for both these men. And Kowalski carries Rogers all the way across the ring, drapes him over the ropes there, and look at this punishment he's dealing out. Rogers slipped, came down actually on his head there on the mat. And Kowalski just keeps pounding away at that left leg of Buddy Rogers. Rogers. 
draped over the lower rope now. Well, there's a shot, a fine shot of two of the outstanding wrestlers in this sport today, Kowalski and Rogers, two of the really big names, big money makers. These fellas are in demand all over the country. Kowalski trying to drag Rogers away from the ropes, trying for a press, but he gets away. Take turns at body slams. You gotta be in shape to take this kind of pounding. Here's another one. Oh, that wouldn't feel good even on a mattress. Kowalski going up high on that rope. Watch him come off and he misses Rogers who gets away. Might have hurt his leg a little bit there. And Rogers trying for a press, and he's got it. Well, let's get right into the ring now to the announcer, Dick Elliott. The time, three minutes and seven seconds. That was a body press. The winner of the fall and the match, Buddy Rogers. Rogers. One of the most colorful wrestlers in the world today, Buddy Rogers. Not champion. one of them, the most colorful. The greatest wrestling that wrestling's ever had come out of this body. I want you and everyone listening in to know one thing, that if he ever made another guy better than me, he hasn't been, be he hasn't been made yet. The good Lord made me, he threw them all the way when it comes to the wrestling business. I've got a lot of imitators, many imitators, but there'll never be another to duplicate me. Champ, the fans have just seen you in a very tough match. How did, how did the match go? To, to... Well, I'll admit it was a little rugged, but like I've always told everyone, in and out of the wrestling business, when it gets too tough for everyone else, it's just right for Buddy Rogers. That's why I'm champ today. Buddy, you've got a lot of fellows claiming this title. Well, there might be a lot of claimants, but the public knows who the real champion is. They know when they look at Rogers, they're looking at the real diamond, the greatest diamond wrestling ever had. Well, there's no doubt about it that you certainly are a fellow that's put on a great, great show in every one of your matches. And that's why you're in demand, not only in this country, but practically all over the world. Well, listen, I'll put the title on all over the world. I don't care where it's at. I want to let these people know once and for all that my motto is not to run from them. If I do any running, it'll be straight at them. Well, tonight you really put on a great show, champ. and. Uh, you gave the customers a fine show here in Chicago. Well, thank you, Bob. And like I've always said, if you want a real champion, you got to get Rogers to fit the bill. I wish you lots and lots of luck. And thank uh, you, Bob. And it's a pleasure being work. with you. Thank, thank you. you, champ. That was Buddy Rogers, one of the most colorful wrestlers in the world today. The winner tonight in the great match with Killer Kowalski. Midget Tag Team, best two out of three falls, 45 minutes time limit. Team number one from London, England, weighing 89 pounds, Lord Littlebrook. Fuck. Team number two, Ontario, at 84 pounds, his partner, Dyke boys have got something going for them. They, they've kept Laura Littlebrook in a corner. The Van Dyke beer team. Working on him. There's a quick tag, and in comes Handy Andy. Right on the eye he goes, too. Laura Littlebrook may never be able to wear a monocle again after this treatment.
Middlebrook trying to buck Handy Andy over the corner where Raleigh Hawk is waiting. He's got him almost there. He got the tag, but I don't know if Joe Moscato saw it. Joe Moscato was tied up uh, engaging with Bo Brummel, and he didn't see the tag. Now, well, let's see if he lets him stay in. He didn't see the tag. Now, Bo Brummel is in. He's made a tag with Handy Andy. Well, it's enough to drive any referee out of his mind, I'll admit it. Particularly with both these fellas wearing Van Dyke's, I don't think Joe is sure which is which. Working again toward a tag. Here comes the Andy Andy, and Joe caught him that time. Now, once again, the tag was made, but I don't think Moscato saw it. There's Ronnie the Hawk with a headlock, and Joe Moscato once again didn't see the tag. <laughs> Littlebrook once again trying to work Bo Brummel into the corner, and every time he does it, there's another tag, and once again, I don't think Joe Moscato saw it. So he decides to let the, uh, the Hawks stay in there. Now they're all in there. Look at this. Chattanooga Choo Choo. Who wants to crack the whip? Well, they got rid of one. They got rid of the tail end or the head end. Somebody has to get out of there. There's three uh, three wrestlers in there. That's Handy Andy kicking uh, Raleigh the Hawk out of the ring. When these fellas fall, that's about a four and a half foot ring, and uh, when they fall off of there, it's a pretty good drop. Go after little drug. Now little hawk is in there. Raleigh the hawk. We've got two battles going on. Well, these fellas have suddenly gone beard crazy. I imagine Lord Littlebrook is thankful that neither one of them chews tobacco. Look at that little brook go to town. Boy, he's a muscular little guy. There's a whip. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Oh, look at him go. Beautiful work. He caught him in a cradle. He got him. Beautiful work by Lord Littlebrook. He caught Handy Andy coming off. He whipped him into the ropes. Caught him coming off the ropes and a beautiful maneuver. Flying drop kick set him up for it. So that uh, only proves, I guess, that uh, Razor is a man's best friend because those beards didn't help. Uh, Littlebrook leads him by the beard and gives him a close shave. Boy, these kids are quick. Joe Moscato ever teed off on this little guy, he would be the first midget in, into orbit.
Bo Brummel now working on the hawk. Oh, I feel sorry for this little fella. He's not too strong, really. Ooh, they're doing mean things to that fella. There's a straddle on Raleigh the Hawk. They got him. They got Raleigh the Hawk there in the corner, and it's all even here. His handy and he pinned him. Lord Littlebrook, however, had not too much to do that time. He's full of vinegar. He's going to be tough in the third fall. Manny Whites now will give us the official time of this second fall. Here he is. The time, 7 minutes, 36 seconds. The winner, team number 2, Dandy Andy and Bull Brummel. 7.36, Bob Brummel, Handy Andy, the winners. Paul coming up, Handy Andy and uh, Bo Brummel. And Bert Littlebrook and the Hawk are both after them. They came out of their corners fast, but it's the Hawk who has to start things off. And the Hawk has a full Nelson on Bo Brummel. Oh, what a pleasant situation this is, huh? Now he's got them both set up. They're going to take turns. Lord Littlebrook got them both rocking. Let one loose, bring the other one in. Just like the assembly line. And who's having all the fun? Lord Littlebrook. Bring on the next one. Oh, he got Hawk in there. He's got the Hawk in there, his own partner. Oh, he doesn't know that. He got his own partner in there by mistake. <laughs> yeah, well, a little exercise is good for you. They want to be friends. Handy Andy coming in. He's got something tucked away in those trunks, I think. Piece of paper or something to rub across the eyes. No, it's more than that. I can see it shining here as the light hit it. It's a piece of metal of some kind. He may never get to use it. There's a whip. He didn't give it to him too good that time, and he caught him with a flying drop kick. Oh, look out, Lord Littlebrook. He missed that one. Another whip. Look at these guys fly. Handy Andy is in now. There's a whip. <laughs> Littlebrook, he's got him. Oh, boy, there was some action for you. They were all flying off the ropes there, and I thought for a minute that Littlebrook was in trouble, but... He came out of it. He really looked as though he was in trouble. He got whipped himself into the ropes. But he's a quick thinker and took advantage of the situation. Both teams are going out of the ring. They're not even going to wait for the official decision. The wrestlers have just entered the ring, and now here is your ring announcer, Leonard Sterling. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. These wrestling matches are sanctioned by the National Wrestling Alliance and under the supervision of the State Athletic Commission. The officials for this evening are your attending physician, Dr. John Belusi, your timekeeper, Mike Murphy, and your referee, Sam Sarbanek. 
Best two out of three team falls, the Australian tag team match. Weighing 235 pounds, from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Jack Owen. His teammate, from Sicily, Italy, weighing 242 pounds, Lou Albano. And weighing 235 pounds, from Kingston, Jamaica, Sweet Daddy Seeky. His teammate, weighing 250 pounds, from Madison, Wisconsin, Seaman Art Thomas. We have a tag match to open the card. You've been introduced to the principals, the team of Siki and Thomas, Sweet Daddy Siki, and Seaman Art Thomas meeting the Sicilians. And you can pretty well tell how the sentiments of the crowd are pointed, with the biggest ovation going to Sweet Daddy and to Seaman Art. Incidentally, we might mention that Tony Aldamori of the Sicilians missed his plane and was unable to make it in time for this match. Thus the substitution with Jack Owens teaming with Lou Albano. Jack from Minneapolis, 235 pounds. He will be referred to during this match as part of the Sicilians. This is a best of three tag match and the bell with Lou Albano meeting Sweet Daddy Siki to get things started. A very, very fine crowd here at Marigold Arena. And anticipating a great match. Lou Albano stomping away. And I'm sure that Sweet Daddy's ears are ringing. Referee is Stan Sarbernick of Chicago. And the tag brings in Seaman Art Thomas, a Madison, Wisconsin boy, 31 years old, 250 pounds. And Lou Albano gets a few words of advice from Jack Owens. Jack probably told him to mean it up a little bit. Very powerful boy, Thomas, as he broke that double wrist lock and sent Albano sprawling. Let's watch for another display of strength now. A beautiful shot as Seaman Thomas puts his muscles to work. Watch him try to break this full Nelson now, and he does. Albano quite bewildered, and calls for another conference. Well, let's see if the pseudo-Sicilian was able to give him some better advice this time. Man, look at that Thomas work. Brute force. Beautiful. Uh, Albano is complaining about to Sarbanek but it's time for another conference let's see what kind of strategy he's going to try this time this tag match underway about four minutes and again Thomas breaks it with sheer strength and the tag brings in Sweet Daddy and now we can look for the tempo to speed up considerably. And Sweet Daddy dishing it out. Oh, there's the Coco Bunk. Watch that beautiful flying drop kick. And another. Look at that Sweet Daddy.
Cincinnati go to work. Whoa, this could be it. One, two, and three. There you have it. Oh, boy. Look at that Albano. He's mad. He'd like to get out of there. Beautiful, fast, furious action with Sweet Daddy Siki setting him up for the pin with a couple of flying drop kicks and a couple of cocoa bombs. Fast action, short time. We'll have the official from our referee, Len Sterling, in just a second. The first, the first fall in three minutes, 32 seconds, Sweet Daddy Sticky and Art Thomas. second fall and we're going to have a little bit of a hassle here that last fall finished up with sweet daddy Siki pinning Lou Albano well apparently it's been uh, settled with Jack Owen starting the second fall picking up against sweet daddy this Jack Owens from Minneapolis, 235 pounds. May not be a regular partner, a regular half of the Sicilians, but I'm sure that he can carry his end because he's plenty mean and plenty tough. And the tag with Seaman R. Thomas coming in. Going to work on Jack Owens. And in the few seconds that he was in there, Jack had enough. This Thomas is six feet four inches tall, has been wrestling as a pro for three years. And he's the daddy of five children, four girls and a boy. And as you'd expect, he played basketball at Central High in Madison. Got a lot of spring in those legs. Jack Owens going to work on Thomas Eyes and now pummeling away at the midsection. Hart has had enough. Boy, this crowd eating up every second of the action. Well, here comes Albano charging out. We did not have the tag. And he's ordered from the ring, and he looked like he was only too glad to leave. Well, that's about the sixth time that we've seen Seaman R. Thomas use his strength to break a hold. And the tag brings in Sweet Daddy Siki. And you can tell the crowd really loves him. Jack Owens very adroitly keeping Sweet Daddy between himself and the referee. And there goes Daddy. He takes about so much. Then he whips into action. Albano charges into the ring to lend a hand to his partner. Ooh, that Coco bump. Watch it now. This could be it. One, two, no. Jack Owens getting some very welcome support from his partner who charged in and became the fourth man in the ring. When it looked like Sweet Daddy was going to pin him, he belted Sweet Daddy off of Owens, who is now pummeling away and giving him a working over. 
Watch it now. Watch it now. We have a bear hug by Sweet Daddy and Jack Owen. Looks like he's had enough. We've got all four men in the ring. Lou Albano would like to get away, but he's gone. That's right, that's right. There's the call, Stan Sarbernick raises Seaman R. Thomas' hand in a signal of victory. A submission hold on that airborne bear hug as Jack Owens called enough. Let's get the official. Six minutes, 18 seconds with a body press. The winner of the match, Sweet Daddy Stinky and Art Thomas. Well, we've had some fast action here. Uh, do you fellas uh, think that you've caught your second wind enough to be able to talk to me? Which one of you is in better condition? Yeah. Well, I think so, you know, George. Well, it's Thomas, Thomas in tip-top condition, you know, well uh -huh. as myself. And um, I'm pretty well sure that he could talk to Oh, well. All right, I'll tell you what. Daddy, you finished up here. Uh, let's, let's give you a chance to catch your, uh, your breath, and uh, we'll talk to you for just a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I do believe we've got um, a young lady here who is the uh, vice president of the Sweet Daddy Seeky Fan Club yes, that's right. uh, with a special presentation. Uh, let's come on in here. Would you tell us your name, please? Bonnie Gold. Bonnie Gold. Yes. And, uh, Bonnie, would you like to make this presentation, please? Yes, I would. All right. On behalf of the International Sweet Daddy Sticky Fan Club, we'd like to present this to you. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I thank you very much. Because this is a beautiful jacket, you know? Everybody say... Yeah, let's show it. Daddy out here. You know, I'd like to say something. You know, uh, one thing I'd like to say, this is the best gift I ever had Isn't anybody that? to present to me, you know? And I think... Uh, 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 take, can I uh, take a look at it for a second? Fellas, please. Yes, it is nice. a beautiful Well, I don't know. Well, we've got... Well, the kangaroos have pulled another one of their tickets. I can't leave this television if you can see that. Hey, this is the best presentation I ever had in my life. And somebody come up and take it like that to tear it up. You know, I what? You call that sportsmanship? That's so sportsmanship for somebody to do like Daddy, that. Daddy, I, I don't know what's coming off here. I was you know, I never had anything like that. No. Nobody never gave me anything. Anything I ever got, I had to work for myself. Well, and you surely And when that somebody award. to give me something, that's when somebody will come up to me and, and tear it up like that. Do you call that gentleman? That's no, not gentleman. That's not. You know, uh, I, I wanted to say this, uh, Daddy. You oh call my this, goodness. Look, 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 look. Right you call that some, somebody give me something and they shine up like this overnight. This uh, is no uh, good. This uh, is nothing. Uh, this is no good. They shouldn't be saying anything up like that. Well, yeah, I don't like that. That's, no. I don't like that one minute. Daddy. You know, it's not, it's not right. No, it isn't. And uh, I, I want to say this. I was talking to the kangaroos just before I came up here to see you. And, uh... They said that they had met you once before and didn't have any trouble with you. Yes, but I don't think it's right for them to be doing anything like that. And I, I, I think that uh, something ought to be done to give you a chance to uh, get them in the ring here. Yes, I think it's really something give them a working because order. it's not right to hey, grab, my, uh, grab something like that. Daddy, Daddy, let's give you a chance to simmer down here. Uh, come here, please. Art, Art, come here, come here. Uh, 
Sweet Daddy is pretty uh, pretty overwrought here. Yes, and I, I can't blame him, but um, I don't, I don't blame him what do you think of this carrying on here? Oh, geez, I don't, I don't think that's right uh, much of a gentleman, I, I would say. I mean, no. it's, it's right, uh, you know, uh, outrageous, I, I should well, say. They, they don't have, uh, they don't have a reputation as being gentlemen, and no. uh, and that was entirely uncalled uh, for. They really showed up tonight. Uh, well, it, it sure did. But that's all right. I mean, we, we, we got a dealing with them this coming Friday, uh, Friday night. And we'll see just what they got to offer then. Well, uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, you're going to have a chance to uh, to really get back at them. And, Certainly uh, I will. I, I do want to uh, say this, too. You know, you're from Madison, uh, Art, and uh, right. I'm from yeah. Milwaukee uh -huh. and now from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Well, so as a couple of Badgers, uh, I want to take particular, uh, make particular mention of the very fine job you did in your thank Madison you very day. Much. Very, very fine. Very Congratulations. Nice to you. Okay, thank you very much. Seaman Art Thomas and Sweet Daddy Seeky. who transcended the sport of wrestling in the 1950s. Original matches with play-by-play -play commentary featuring Grunt and Groaner's Gorgeous George, Argentina Roca, refereed by Joe Lewis, Buddy Rogers and Killer Kowalski, and the Midgets. Over and under headline. Headbutt. A drop kick. Another drop kick. Beautiful. The Golden Age of Wrestling, volumes one and two.